Welcome to another episode of Maker Monday and in this one we are going to be showing you how Bant built the start and finish line of our slot car track that we built and you can check those videos out also on our YouTube channel. You built for a, our career project, we built a slot car track through our offices and we had a start and finish line which not only did the red, 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 green for go, um, it also monitored or tracked the laps as the cars passed through. So it sensed when the cars were coming through and uh, turned on a little LED light to show that that was one lap, right? Yes. Okay. And then we also sent that through to PRDG network monitor to keep track of the lap counts. Yes. So we were monitoring the lap counts. I got it? Yes, you got everything. All right. So show us how you did that. What did you build? Okay. So I built this traffic light here mm -hmm. for the starting lights. Here are some LEDs for the red green thing and yellow and whatever. Uh, we also have two infrared sensors here in the side. Yeah. So if a car passes here, then we can recognize it and count the lap. Mm. So we are also able to do uh, lap timings and something like that with, with this uh, sensor. Um, I think it's it's uh, not the right one to talk with this here because filming with all these messy cables. So I built uh, nearly the same here without these fancy 3D okay. print case. So this is what's inside that. Yes. All right. So, so but we only have one counter here, but just uh, just just as a just to show us what it's yes, about. Yeah. Yes. So what do you got here? So we have the ESP32. Mm -hmm. So I think we used a lot of them already in the Maker Monday. Um, this part here is an infrared uh, tracker, so it will turn out, put out here infrared and will track if it comes back. Mm -hmm. So if there is nothing here, then it won't come back, it doesn't get reflected, so it recognizes here is nothing. And okay. if the car comes, it will uh, detect that. Okay. And then we have some LEDs. We use them a lot in different yeah. projects. I think everybody loves LEDs. Who doesn't? <laughs> I think let's start it up. So it's a pretty, pretty simple setup, isn't it? Yes. Yes, I think the technical uh, components are not that much. It's more about the idea how to recognize the, yeah. the car here. And the coding, I guess. Yes. Which so we'll, look at it. We'll, we'll look at that briefly. <laughs> let's start it up. So at the beginning, we will see nothing. Yeah. So in the, in the traffic light, we have some fancy light combinations here. We'll see them later. Um, and that's it. Okay. And we have the infrared, and if the car comes here, can it show that. Okay. Then so it detects it, and then it will detect lights it. the LED so lights. So it's an analog sensor. So if nothing is here, it will send 3.3 volts here. Mm -hmm. And if it recognizes something, we don't have any volts here, so we can read this pin with the ESP. Okay. And that's all the magic. Pretty cool. Should we have a look at the software aspect? Yes. So let's bring in the technic. Bring it in. So, you need a computer, some cars, and the traffic light, I think. That would make sense. So, that's what it looks like for starting. Mm -hmm. So, what can we do now here? So, we have a Wi Fi in here, Bluetooth, and all this okay, stuff. Okay, so that's connected. Yes, it's fully connected. Fully connected. And we um, use MQTT to uh, manage everything. Mm -hmm. We have some <coughs> some options here. Um, in case now all lights are red, so yes. we can send an MQTT message to uh, get them green. And there so you now go. it should be green. And let's go. Um, we can turn it red again. Okay. So yes, at the moment it doesn't do anything instead of lighting. Yeah. Um, the lap counter isn't active now because we have to start the race. Mm. Um, and this is also an MQTT command, so we send uh, to the topic a race start mm -hmm. and then the traffic light will start the race. Okay. So, start the race. First of all, I think we do a reset. Let's do a it's reset. also an MQTT command. This will reset the lap timers, okay. will bring everything to red, and mm -hmm. enables um, the counters. Yeah. And now we are ready to race. Okay. So let's start a race by sending race to the MQTT topic. Right. It's uh, super complex yeah. technology. <laughs> um, right. so good. 
We're so now, now we see a nice uh, starting animation. Yeah. The traffic light goes green. Green. And what happens now? First, nothing because the cars didn't start yet. Yeah. So, but now if the car comes and drives through, ah. it counts a lap. So this is the first lap. Yes. Ah. But you will see it would be totally wrong now because the first lap isn't done. Yeah. There is a delay. Um, it will wait one or two seconds before it counts the first lap. So, so it gives the cars a chance to go through yes, first? Yes. Um, so in this case, obviously, we in waited this case, so long. I, it was too slow mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I think nobody should start after one second with racing. No, I'm guessing people will be going straight Good. away. So the second car comes through. So it should count yeah. one here. I can't see the lights. Yeah, they're on. So and then we have the and next it round. Through. It comes through. And we have track no. two. Yes. Very cool. So you can visually see where, where which which lap you're yes. on. Yes. Okay. So also, if a lap is counted here, we also uh, push one MQTT message to the broker, mm -hmm. so we could see it on the laptop if somebody has reached a new round, and we also push that to PRDG. Okay. So we have a sensor in PRDG, and there we see the channels from both lanes, and we can see at the end who has won this. Okay. Yes. So that's how it works. Let's jump into the code. Um, I don't think we have to watch on everything here, just on the, the main part. So we have the MQTT connection here mm. with an address and the password and the Wi-Fi settings. We have done that for everything with, uh, with ESPs and MQTT, mm. so that's no big deal now. Then we define uh, a construct for all information we need for the, the lab counting. So we have a pin. So mm. that's the, the pin on the ESP, which is connected to the left and to the right side. So mm. we have to decide which one is, is which, we right. configure them. Then we have a variable for the number of rounds yeah. to count them. Yeah. And then we have here a Boolean, which say if a car is detected or not. Okay. Um, yeah. Here we have some, some of the JSON stuff to talk with PRDG here. And then we do the Wi-Fi setup to log into the Wi-Fi. Okay. I think that's just exactly the same code like in the temperature logger from the beginning. So yeah. I just copied that because it works. Then here we do the MQTT connection and um, we can uh, publish here. Now oh, I'm here. Okay. I'm ready to talk. Yeah. Here we have to subscribe for yeah. the for the incoming topic. Here is the outcoming topic. Yeah. They are defined in the code. Yeah, then at the beginning, the ESP starts up and do its setup procedure. So it's defined here. We set up the Wi-Fi first. Then we set up the MQTT when we have a Wi-Fi connection. And then we have to define uh, the LEDs mm -hmm. here. It's, it's this part here. And uh, we define the pins okay. for the first and the second. And here are the callbacks for the MQTT command. So these are the options we can send, red, green, race, reset, mm. and the brightness, and then we will execute a code function which do that, whatever we want. So these are the functions, they are all the same, but just with red yeah. and green light. Um, the race time is a bit, a bit more um, complex because we have to change two LEDs, the next two, the next two with some delay. Mm. But basically, it's the same stuff. We change here the color to red, and then we show everything. And we have a delay timer, which we con can configure here. Mm. Um, it's 300 milliseconds. If you want it slower or faster, you can change this here. Right. Um, then I think the biggest technical part for the most users will be this one here. And these are interrupts. Do you know what it is? <laughs> uh, you can explain it. Yes. So um, normally you have a, a loop in your, in your ESP and it will do the same stuff all the time mm -hmm. and do it and do it. But um, it, it, uh, you have no chance to um, react on something what, hap what is happening. So here you can use an interrupt. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's added to the pin we configured. And whenever something changes on this pin, the ESP will instantly stop everything he's doing at the moment. Okay. And then, first of everything, he will do 
the interrupt routine to uh, which said, okay, there is something. Okay. So, and then after this, the program will do the main stuff again. Okay. Why do you use an interrupt? Uh, we use an interrupt because we, we cannot use timings or something like that. We don't know when a car is coming. Yeah. The car comes when it's there and we cannot do uh, time control here. So we have to react on an event mm. and this you can do with an interrupt. Okay. So here we configure, we, we add an interrupt on this pin here and here we say what have to be happening here to to trigger it, and we say the voltage have to be falling. Mm -hmm. So I, we, we said at, at the beginning we have some voltage here on the sensor, yeah. and if you have no voltage, yeah, then it has something detected, and that we are handling here. Okay. So if the voltage on the pin is falling, then the interrupt then gets triggered. Car. Yeah. And um, an interrupt has to be really, really fast. Okay. So you don't want to interrupt your main program for a long time. Mm. So everything we do here is we set the variable we defined at the beginning, yeah. detected, true. Okay. So then the program goes back to the main loop and in the main loop, we can show that here. Uh, it's here. So in the main loop, we check um, if lab A detected something or also check mm -hmm. if lab B mm -hmm. has detected mm -hmm. something. And okay. then we handle all these mathematics in the main loop. Okay. So we have okay. only this, this really short interrupt and then we can go back to yeah. the main program and handle all these events okay. which are happened all here. Right. So yes, that's I think is um, the biggest part here. Okay. This is all well and good that you've seen here and it stands alone as its own project. But you might also want to get that data that you create into some kind of monitoring system. In our case, we use PRDG network monitoring system and we'll show you how we get the data from the labs into that system. Hope you'll join us for that. Click subscribe below, click the little notification bell and we'll see you next time.